This is Nerd Alert 226. Today we're going to concentrate 3% H2O2, or hydrogen peroxide, that you can get from your local grocery store. And what you have, what you have to do is, first you have to look at the math. So if you have 3% and you want 30%, then you'd have to, you'd have to multiply 3 times 10. Well, then what happens is that if you have just say a thousand milliliters, well then you're you're gonna have to yeah, then you're gonna have to divide that by ten, and a thousand divided by ten equals a hundred. So a hundred, you would end up with a hundred milliliters of what's left with your three percent hydrogen peroxide. So as you can see here, I have a very small amount. I'm not going to go precise, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a visu visual representation of what you would do. So take your, take your, um, you take your uh, Bunsen burner or whatever you have, and then you heat up your hydrogen peroxide. And as it heats up, As it heats up, the hydrogen peroxide, you'll want to do this in a dark room. So, as you can see, I just turned off my lights. And the LEDs on this and the flame, if, I'm going to get a hot plate soon. So, if, if you have a hot plate, great. If you have one of these, I wouldn't recommend doing this experiment. But I'm just doing, I'm just doing an example. So as you heat up your thirty percent, your as you heat up your three percent hydrogen peroxide, you'll see that it starts boiling. But once it starts to boil, unfortunately, maybe ten percent of that hydrogen peroxide is going to be decomposed along with the heating, whether you have a hot plate or a burner like I have. So as you can see, it's starting to burn, or it's starting to bubble. And you don't want it to spatter. So you just allow it to boil over some. Just allow the water to get out of there. Boil down the water. If you have a heating rod, that would work really well too. Just stick your heating rod in there. It'll stop spattering. Or spattering as much as it was. Oh yeah, always remember to wear goggles while doing this experiment too. It's off camera, but I'm wearing goggles. So, yes. so just leave that for just a moment. Boiling it, allowing the hydrogen peroxide to stay in the mixture while the water boils off. Now, since I put about maybe 10 milliliters in there, or 5 milliliters, if I were to make it go all the way up to 30%, then I'd be left with 0.5 of a milliliter, and that's not a lot at all. So I'm going to be left with about maybe 10 milliliters once I'm finished with this. So, or not 10, I'm going to be left with about uh, maybe 3 milliliters because I don't want to heat it that much. carbon residue actually causes a layer to block out some of the light so the carbon residue is actually more of a good thing than it is a bad thing normally Alright, so 
So now, I have to leave the test tube to cool for a few minutes. So, I'll be back. Hello, this is NerdAlert226, and I'm back. And as you can see, here we have much, much less hydrogen peroxide than we started out with. And that tells you that it is more concentrated than it began with. So if it started with about 10 milliliters, about, and we bring it down to about maybe 2 milliliters, then it's probably concentrated to around maybe almost 20% purity. And that's actually pretty good for hydrogen peroxide. This is useful for many, many more experiments than than 3% is. So that was how to make 3% H2O2 stronger. Thank you for watching.